Well, today I'm pretty excited. I get to connect with one of my favorite pastors within the United Methodist Church. I have lots of friends within the United Methodist Church, and this is Brian Collier. Brian's uh, pastoring a great church, the Orchard in Tupelo, Mississippi. Brian, say hello to folks. Hey, how are y'all? So, <laughs> <laughs> See, you just proved you're from Mississippi. That's, that, I love your accent. That's good. So, Brian, the reason I wanted to connect with you today, and you've probably seen this too, if you uh, follow what's happening across the country with churches, is generally there seems to be a decline in attendance, particularly as uh, people are noticing folks are attending church less frequently, and so regular attendance looks different. And I'm curious because you seem to be bucking that trend. Your, your church has seen increase in the last several years. So how do you explain that? What's different at the Orchard? Well, a, a couple of things probably are in play there. One is uh, even among committed Christians, we're seeing regular attendance uh, go down. You know, when we started trying to reach people who weren't being reached, our target was to have them to come twice a month. That felt like regular attendance to them. We are expecting committed people to come more than that. Now it's kind of reversing trend, I mean, reversing uh, directions. And so even people who were committed three and four times a month a couple of years ago are now one and two times a month, primarily because of either family obligations or their, their ch children obligations. The world is so busy, they're, they're just not in town. They're traveling a lot. So one of the things that we've done is try to say, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, recognize that that's an opportunity when you're not here to be connecting to people who might eventually you might invite here. Hmm. But even though we're seeing them attend less frequently, we are seeing them bring more and more people with them. Oh, I love that. We're, we're also encouraging them to use, um, one of, I think one of the most important tools that we developed in the last seven, eight years is the live stream. And so uh, funny enough, I was uh, out of town myself this past weekend. I was sitting at a coffee shop in a town about three hours from us and I ran into some people who watch our live stream from a town, another town that's three hours away because they know we have a live stream. How do they find that out? They play on a soccer team with somebody who goes from our, to our church who in between games or on the morning before the game or after the game, they're, they're logged on to live stream. So, our people are also inviting people to watch live stream with them. And we don't count that in our attendance numbers. People who are on live stream, we don't count that. But it's a way that a lot of people are getting introduced to our church. Um, that's one thing. The third thing we're doing is really generating, trying to find other, in the business world, they would call them growth engines. But we're trying to find new markets. So we, we are planting churches in two new places that will launch one in January and one in February. And so uh, in places that don't have alternative expressions of the gospel, then we are trying to get there and say, if you're not hearing it the way it's being said, let us say it a different way to you. So those are all strategic decisions we made, which are showing some fruit. So let me follow up, uh, particularly on the technology piece, because I've actually heard some pastors recently argue, maybe we should stop live streaming because people are watching the live stream and not coming to the physical location. How would you react to that? Well, our, our approach has just always been very different than that. Even when we didn't have live stream, we discouraged our people from coming to the building too much. Uh, primarily, we didn't do Wednesday night, we don't do Wednesday night programming for adults. We didn't do a lot of excessive programming, uh, primarily because we feel like that we want them in worship. We want them growing deep in the love of Jesus, which is one of our mission, one half of our mission. The other's branching out to others with that love. Well, we want them in discipleship, but if they're here three or four times, they probably don't have three or four flexible blocks to actually be in the world changing it. So we've always said, we don't want you here every time the doors are open, so we don't open the doors very much. Come a few times, let us, let us really use the time you give us, but then that leaves you time to actually be in the world changing it. So I, I've said before, we value the men and the women who coach in Little League or who mentor at boys and girls clubs, we would rather them go do that than attend another study here. So our strategic approach from the beginning is being, don't be here very much. And so to say we want you here more is kind of against the heart of who we've been from the beginning. So That's good. I love that heart, Brian. So aside from the attendance trends, are you seeing any other cultural trends that you think the church needs to pay attention to? 
Well, one, one for us that we're really paying attention to is uh, uh, not very far off of the live stream trend is that we just have got to de develop multiple delivery systems for the message and multiple discipleship streams. We've got some really great and creative minds here. And I don't think we've got it figured out, but I do believe we're working on the right problem. And so uh, trying to capture what we call gaps, that 10 minutes in the morning while somebody's getting ready, that 15 minutes while they're in the carpool line, that 10 minutes between house and work, how can we disciple people? How can we plant seeds that grow uh, at other times? How can we plant seeds in those moments? And so we're trying to figure out how to do podcasts and video casts and get get uh, that information into their world in those brief moments that we have. Uh, we, we're doing something here we used to call at-home resources, which is just, we wanted people to disciple themselves and disciple their families when they weren't with us. But then it made no sense to call them at-home resources because they were on the go. So now we just call them on-the-go resources. And we're just trying to figure out every gap, how can we give you something that you could use um, that would help you grow as a follower of Jesus. And so I think that means multiple delivery systems and multiple, multiple delivery points. Is one That's thing. good. That's yeah. good. All right. And here's the key question. Is it Ole Miss or Mississippi State? Go dogs. <laughs> I don't have a cowbell in my office. That's a, that's a crying shame. But uh, if I had one, I'd be ringing it really loudly right now. <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, we really appreciate you sharing some insights with us today. Well, thanks for the invite. I enjoyed the conversation.